high harmony seekers. When we listen to the gentle breeze, the sound of leaves rustling, and the peacefulness of this very moment, we can feel a deep connection. Have you ever had the chance to hold a delicate bird in your hands and feel its heartbeat? It's such a powerful moment, isn't it? You can't help but be aware of its vulnerability and the incredible trust it has in you. Our kids, in the midst of all this conflict, are just like these birds. Their hearts are so delicate, you know? They're feeling a mix of fear and hope. It's hard not to think about the children who are affected by the conflicts between Gaza and Israel. The whole world is watching, and our hearts go out to them. We're here today to talk about their stories, their challenges, their resilience, and their hopes. I want to talk about impact of war on young souls. Let's find out the challenges they face, both the ones we can see and the ones we can't. And as we go further into our conversation, we'll come across some really touching stories. Stories about young souls who overcome challenges and rise above the obstacles that try to dim their inner light. By the end of this conversation, we won't leave feeling sad. Instead, let's make sure we have some mindfulness tools that are perfect for young people. These tools will help both them and us find moments of peace even when things are hectic. When we hear the word war, we often think of battlefields, soldiers, tanks, and ruins. It's quite a vivid image that comes to mind. But, you know, there's something more to this sad situation that we often overlook. It's the innocent hearts of our kids, just wanting to feel like everything is normal. Firstly, let's talk about the physical challenges. It's really sad to see how kids in conflict zones don't have access to basic necessities. It's crazy how water, which used to be so easy to find, has now become this expensive luxury. When there's not enough food, hunger is always there with you. Their homes, which used to be such safe and secure places, could be completely destroyed now. And now, the streets where they used to play without a care are filled with the echoes of artillery. Beyond the scars we can see, there are also deep scars that we can't see. It's really interesting how children can end up carrying trauma silently. I'm having trouble sleeping because I keep having nightmares about losing things and feeling scared. It's really tough for these young minds to understand all the violence they see. It leaves them feeling confused and really anxious. Trauma can really mess with their emotional growth, making them seem way older than they actually are. Can you imagine how heavy it must feel for a young heart to lose a parent, a sibling, or a friend? It's really tough emotionally. Losing loved ones can leave a deep void, don't you think? It's really unfortunate that schools, which are supposed to be places for learning and personal development, can sometimes be closed or destroyed. This not only deprives students of education, but also takes away the opportunity for them to bond with their peers. The playgrounds are empty, and it's sad to see. Instead of playing, children might see violent acts happening which can really change how they see the world. War doesn't just take away childhood. It actually turns children into adults without their consent. Their innocence, curiosity, and joy get overshadowed by their survival instincts. But you know what? Even in this bleak landscape, there are moments of hope that shine through. Kids are really amazing. They can adapt to any situation, stay hopeful, and even find moments of happiness in the toughest times. Before we move on with our conversation, let's just take a moment to send some love and compassion to these young children. Imagine them being surrounded by a warm and comforting light, filled with love and a sense of security. It's our wish for a world where every child can freely play, joyfully learn, and peacefully sleep. You know, stories have this incredible ability to bring people together, connecting us on a deep level. It's like they can bridge the gap between us, bringing our hearts closer. Because of that, I've got a story to share with you today that's all about conflict, but it's also filled with hope and resilience. Let me tell you the story of Ali, 
a young boy from Gaza. Ali's days used to be all about school. He loved literature. It was his absolute favorite subject. He was really into stories, you know. Like, he couldn't get enough of those tales about faraway lands, heroes, and crazy adventures. But as the war got worse, his school, which used to be a place full of hopes and dreams, was destroyed by all the bombings. The library, the one filled with books that totally fueled his imagination, well, it's just a complete wreck now. Can you believe it? Guess what Ali stumbled upon one day? In the middle of all the wreckage, he found this book that was only partially burnt. The edges were all burnt up, but the words inside still had their magic, you know? This discovery ignites his hope. Ali was determined in his heart and thought, If I can't go to the library, I'll just rebuild one myself, even if it means starting with just one book. From that day, Ali and his friends started the difficult job of saving books from the rubble. They kept collecting readable pages and intact books day after day and managed to create a makeshift library in an abandoned building. Guess what happened next? The news between the children started to spread out. And before you knew it, kids from nearby places started showing up. They weren't just there to read. They actually brought books from their own homes to donate. Over time, this sanctuary grew and became even more meaningful. It wasn't just a library. It turned into something much more. It became a powerful symbol of resistance, not against any specific enemy, but against the overwhelming feeling of despair. In the midst of all the chaos, there was something quite rebellious about the quiet whispers of children reading and the gentle sound of pages being turned. Ali's story teaches us a lot of things. You know, it's pretty incredible how even in the face of huge challenges, the human spirit, especially in kids, just has this natural knack for finding hope. Ali decided to focus on creating rather than feeling hopeless and chose to be resilient instead of giving up. His library was like a shining light, not just for him, but for lots of kids too. It reminded them that even when things seem really tough, there's always room for stories that bring hope. How can we tap into the spirit of Ali in our own lives, regardless of the challenges we're dealing with? How can we go about creating sanctuaries of hope, understanding, and resilience? Resilience and hope are two important qualities that can help us overcome challenges and stay positive. Resilience and hope are small flickers of light that shine through the darkness of challenges. But you know, it's funny how those little lights can actually show us the way and keep us moving forwards. These qualities become so important for children caught in the middle of conflict. They are what help them survive and grow. Kids have this amazing natural resilience. Their worlds can be completely destroyed in one moment. But then, just like that, they could be having fun in the midst of the wreckage, laughing and chasing each other. This doesn't make their situation any less serious, but it shows how they have the amazing ability to recover and find moments of happiness even when they're feeling hopeless. Hope is like a seed we carry within us. No matter how tough the conditions are, this seed somehow manages to sprout and stretch towards even the tiniest bit of sunlight. It's the hope that keeps them going. They dream of better days, believe that peace is possible and somehow manage to find purpose even in the midst of chaos. It's their resilience and hope. Even when people are faced with loss, they often manage to find a way to rise above it, to create something meaningful, and to inspire others. When we talk about resilience and hope, we're not just talking about enduring pain, or waiting for better days. It's all about actively seeking or making moments of joy, purpose, and connection, even when it feels like everything is falling apart. It's all about turning pain into strength, loss into motivation, and fear into determination, you know? We can all learn from these young children, no matter where we are in our own lives. The stories of these people, their strength, and their optimism 
can really inspire us to tackle our own challenges with a fresh mindset and a renewed sense of determination. Can we also find that inner strength to rise above our challenges? Nurture that seed of hope within us and move forwards with grace and determination? Let me tell you another story. A story about a young Israeli girl named Noah who grew up surrounded by her loving family. She had a lot going on in her life. School, hanging out with friends, and just enjoying the little things that make childhood so special. But sometimes, the peacefulness was interrupted by the distant echoes of warfare. She would listen to stories from her elders about the other sides. Stories that were filled with worry, advice, and sometimes bias. But then one day, something happened that changed her point of view. So, she's out playing in her backyard, and all of a sudden, she trips over this crumpled piece of paper. It must have been blown all the way from miles away by the wind. She opens it and saw this amazing drawing. It showed a house, a tree, and two kids having a blast while the sun was shining so brightly. There was a message scribbled on the back, but she couldn't understand the language it was written in. Noah was curious and showed this drawing to her school teacher, who helped her translate the Arabic words. It says, I hope that one day our worlds will come together, even though we've never met. This little message from a child in Gaza that Noah didn't know really touched her heart. Since that day, she started to find out and learn more about the other side. Instead of just relying on stories that were passed down, she decided to go directly to her Palestinian peers and hear their stories firsthand. As they exchanged letters, shared drawings, and eventually connected through digital communications, they started to build bridges of understanding. These bridges weren't made with bricks or stones, but with our shared dreams, similar joys, and mutual aspirations. Over time, Noah's personal curiosity evolved into a project that involved the whole community. The kids from both sides of the conflict started sharing stories, art, and even music with each other. This place turned into a safe space, like a haven, where people's biases disappeared and were replaced with real curiosity and understanding. Noah's story is a great reminder of how powerful perspective can be. It's interesting how it reminds us that sometimes our differences are just how we see things. Underneath them, you'll find these universal human emotions, desires, and dreams. True peace blossoms when we focus on understanding rather than division. Let's take a moment to think about our own lives. Do you think we've put up barriers because we've misunderstood or had preconceived notions? Can we, like Noah, Try to truly understand each other and bring people together, even if there are differences between us. Whether they're between countries or within our own communities, when everything around us is chaotic and filled with conflict, it becomes even more important to find inner stillness and peace within ourselves. Mindfulness is a gentle practice that can help us find peace within ourselves, and it can be particularly beneficial for our young ones who are naturally sensitive. Mindfulness is all about being present and staying focused on the current moment. Children who find themselves in the middle of conflict can use it as a way to temporarily disconnect from the chaos around them and find inner peace. How about we try out some easy exercises specifically designed for children? These practices may seem simple, but they can have a powerful impact. They help children manage their emotions find peace during difficult times, and develop kindness and empathy. You can try this fun little activity with a child. Just ask them to lie down and put a stuffed toy on their belly. As they breathe in and out, they can watch the toy go up and down. This exercise not only helps them relax, but also makes you aware of your breath while watching. Here's another fun activity for kids. They, you can play with them. Let them pick three different colors pebbles. Every pebble color symbolizes a different aspect of nature, like flowers, mountains, and calm water. In turn, when each person holds each pebble in their hand, they have to close their eyes and imagine, 
feel and connect with the different qualities they represent. Describe what they see. It's like grounding yourself in the strength of a mountain or the calmness of still water. There are many more similar exercises that you can play with them. These practices aren't just exercises. They're like doorways. Doorways that take kids from the chaotic outside world to the peaceful inside world. And as they grow and change, this connection with their inner selves will give them the strength to handle challenges with grace, understanding, and compassion. It's really important for adults, like you and me, who are taking care of these young souls, to set a good example for them. You should totally embrace these practices yourself. When kids see mindfulness in action, they're more likely to pick up on it and benefit from it. So, give it a try. It's really tough when someone you care about is caught up in a conflict. The pain can be overwhelming. We can't really control what happens around us. But we can definitely choose how we react to it. In order to have peace in the world, we first need to find peace within ourselves. When someone focuses on finding inner peace and clarity, it can have a positive impact on both themselves and the people around them. When we let our thoughts, speech, and actions come from a peaceful place, they have the power to inspire and bring healing. When we're faced with conflict, it's really tempting to start blaming and judging others. But you know, understanding is like a soothing balm that can heal wounds. When we try to understand the suffering of everyone involved, including ourselves, compassion naturally comes up. Compassion is really important because it sets the stage for having meaningful conversations and finding ways to make up with each other. I believe that young people aren't just watching life unfold, but they actively take part in shaping their own stories by giving them mindfulness tools and helping them understand. We can help them make sense of what they've been through. Share how they feel and imagine a world where everyone is united. They are the ones who will lead the way in the future. And by taking care of their mental and emotional health, we are planting the seeds for a better and more peaceful tomorrow. Finding peace is like taking a journey where we need to keep moving forwards one step at a time. Every time we show kindness, understand others, and practice mindfulness, we're making progress on this journey. As we start to have peace within ourselves, we not only find comfort for ourselves, but also become agents of positive change, working towards healing the world step by step. We've gone through stories that really touch our hearts. Stories about kids who are just like beautiful flowers in a garden, brimming with potential and hope. We've talked about resilience, about how the human spirit can overcome anything, even when faced with challenges. We've talked about mindfulness, which is like a guiding light that helps us look within ourselves and find inner peace. But you know, what's even more important is that we've talked about how compassion, understanding, and love can actually lead us to find solutions. We need solutions that go beyond just dealing with the surface issues of conflict. We need solutions that dig deep and heal the broken parts of our shared humanity. Let's take this essence with us as we go out into the world. It's important to keep in mind that every person we come across is like a mirror of ourselves. They have their own unique stories, dreams, and struggles. When we reach out to be friends, listen without judging, and show kindness. We not only help others heal, but also find healing ourselves. As we wrap up our time together, reflecting on stories and deep thoughts, I want to invite you to keep the conversation going. We're going to talk about the experiences of soldiers in our next episode. We'll get a deep look into the emotions and thoughts of those who are right in the middle of these conflicts. Soldiers are more than just warriors in battle. They're human beings with hearts, dreams, fears, and moments of vulnerability. What's hiding beneath that armor? What kind of stories do their hearts tell in the midst of all the chaos and noise of war? So, how exactly can mindfulness and understanding help them on their journey to healing? Please join me on this meaningful conversation into the depths of the soldier's heart.